Oh, hello there YouTube. It's been a while, hasn't it? What am I doing with this old Toshiba? Well, writing the script, of course. Now, I already had a look at this machine a while back and uh, left it with some problems outstanding, but we can get into that later. First off, let's talk about how weird this thing is. Now you may say, hold on, it's a great Toshiba laptop from the 90s. There's millions like it. And you'd be right, but uh, never judge a notebook by its cover. This was the last of a dying breed, and it's left very little trace of itself in history. With some sleuthing, I've tracked down what info I can, and I'll tell you a little tale about what's likely the last monochrome notebook from a major manufacturer. And even by those standards, this is an outlier. After a long search through back issues of magazines, the first reference I could find to this machine wasn't a review or a press release, but simply a sales listing. PC Magazine, May 95 issue. For sale, Toshiba T2100 series, monochrome with a 486DX2 50MHz CPU and 4MB of RAM. Alright, so what's weird about that? Well, I looked through the rest of the issues for the year, searching for references to this machine, looking at reviews and roundups of other laptops, scoping out the competition, and what I found was very few references to any monochrome laptops whatsoever. I found the IBM ThinkPad 500, that was $800, similar specs, much smaller hard disk, but uh, that launched in 1993, and in the last three issues of PC Magazine for 1995, only the very last one had any mono notebooks. Perhaps they were selling off everything at the back of the warehouse to end the year. And let's set some context here. PC Magazine was a glorified catalogue. Not to bash the articles, but the thing is over 500 pages, came out twice a month, and it's probably 90 plus percent adverts. This was an important service back in the day. It was one of the only ways to find out who was selling what and for how much, you know, for anywhere outside of your local stores. So it's doing a job, but you know, this laptop, it's almost its own category. Hardly anyone is selling this kind of thing. It's got very few competitors outside of no name budget brands and the articles in the mag aren't even mentioning mono laptops. In the August issue, they round up 80 notebooks and compare them to each other. Windows 95 and Pentiums are the new hotness and it's broken down into four main sections, multimedia notebooks, full featured notebooks, sub notebooks and value notebook. In none of those categories do they even talk about anything but colour screens. So that's our background. We've got a machine that seems like it was made by accident and this one I actually have as a 75 megahertz processor too which I could not find for sale at all. Was it a special order? Who decided that a machine with no sound card and no colour needed the best processor option available in the range? What would you be doing with this other than word processing? I guess perhaps heavy spreadsheet use? It's all I can come up with. Uh, even for Word and Excel, the lack of colour would be an issue though, right? Charts would suck. Uh, perhaps it was often plugged into a monitor, although I cannot see a scratch on it. The ports all look pristine, plastics fantastic. In fact, the whole thing's in superb condition. It's got some yellowing on the keyboard and the floppy drive, but I can't see a mark on it anywhere. So we've got this rare but not valuable machine. What do I do with it next? Is it useful for anything today? What do I think of it? Should I keep it? And we'll get into the uh, fixes I've carried out and what's inside. Up next, let's have a look at that floppy disk. We'll get it to pieces and see what we can do with it. Well, isn't uh, next day delivery a miracle? Got a compact flash adapter to replace the uh, hard disk and an assortment of bands to try out on the floppy disk. These also seem a little bit thicker, but hopefully that'll be okay. So let's have a very long sequence, which I will speed up, of me uh, <laughs> trying and failing to get this thing on. Thank you. 
Oh, it was quite easy to take out all of them. Well, no, no, I'm able to <laughs> make sure it's a good size and everything. sure it moves right. I don't have an eject button. <laughs> oh well, I think it's these things. This one has a weird connector. I don't know if it's broken or worn out or something. But you kind of have to tuck that in and then tuck in this blue piece of plastic to make it tight. Bending the whole thing right there, we get good. Yep, yeah, that's on. Wonder how long it's been since this floppy drive worked. All right, what screws have I got left? Right, one in. Lovely. Okay, well, that doesn't seem like it's even trying the floppy disk. Hmm, maybe I'll try connecting the compact flash thing because why, why is it so slow to post? So after all of that work, does the floppy drive actually work? Well, <laughs> kind of. If I type A here, makes good noises, we can type DIR, and we get a lovely directory listing of everything on that floppy disk. So it looks like it works, but it only kind of works. On the install disks, all is not so well. And why is that? Well, it's because the install disks are absolutely completely full. Um, and you also have a problem formatting disks on this thing. Why? Looks good, right? It is good. The only problem is, is that the uh, new rubber band is, you know, half a millimeter or maybe less thicker than the old one. And the tolerances on this drive are so tight that when the head moves all the way to the far end of its travel, it hits the belt and jams the drive. Um, and then it doesn't always want to return from there. So this will be fine on 99.9% .9 of discs because they're never absolutely full. Uh, but you can't format and you, yeah, there's going to be the odd disk like install disks where they're absolutely full to the very uh, last byte where it's not going to work. Is it worth any more fussing around? No. It's nice. It mostly works. I can put, you know, games and stuff in and it's probably going to do the job. So we can leave the floppy drive there, um, but let's move on to getting stuff installed. So we can just take the disk out, put it into another machine, and get the files on there. Detect 128 meg, yes, thank you. Uh, exit setup and we'll just wipe everything. Exit F3. So let's go F disk. Delete partition. It's kind of scary that I basically still remember all of this stuff. <laughs> oh, it's got a volume label, come on. Don't want to type. M S DOS underscore six 
clues, yes. Oh, escape to continue, of course. System will now restart. Yes, good. Right, let's now do the install. <laughs> it's got such a gnarly floppy disk, this thing, I love it. Now, you may be wondering why this is propped up like this. <laughs> or why it is where it is, and it's because the hinge is just completely in pieces, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> to set up MS-DOS, press enter. Yes, good. I've never set up MS-DOS before. Windows 95 is probably the first operating system uh, on a PC that I installed. Uh, it's surprisingly user-friendly, really. I mean, not super user-friendly, but, uh, you know, I haven't got to look anything up, I don't need a manual, it just, it just works. So I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Very cheerful sounding floppy drive, this one. United States. Wrong. Very wrong. DOS, yeah, makes sense. Now the damn thrill of the progress bar. I'm disappointed not to be doing this directly on the 486 in glorious monochrome, but uh, you've got to work with what, you, what you're given. You've got to give it its due, I mean the install's pretty quick. <laughs> you're not going to beat this with any version of Windows. Oh god yeah, well that Pentium 2 I was using earlier when I ran the restore disks through that. I mean, the n it's got all the pre-installed nonsense and stuff and goes through a whole bunch of uh, uh, what Microsoft referred to as audit phases, which basically does a reboot, does some installs of stuff, does another reboot, does some more installs of stuff. Let's keep all this in the right order, that's disk one. And... Yeah, God, it's just so slow thrashing away at the disk. I don't know how long it... Oh no! <laughs> I'm gonna have to rewrite this disc. I mean it's making different noises to kind of give me hope, but it's not going up is it that number? This is why the YouTube version is so heavily edited. Uh, do I want to try fail the operation? None of this stuff's probably critical. ANSI dot. Mm, actually, ANSI dot sys does sound fairly important, but you know, who cares? ANSI dot. Well, I could manually copy that. If the rest of the disk works. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this disk mullered. How did it work perfectly when I was reading stuff off it? Let's try the cleaning disc that I have for the Amiga. Computer loves alcohol. There you go. Wait. <laughs> oh no, I forgot sometimes the enter key doesn't work on this. Oh, why can't I control or delete? Oh god damn it. <laughs> Ooh! Starting in MS-DOS, enter a date. Enter new date. What? Oh, is it even going to understand today's date? What day is it? 20th. Oh, or is it in America land? Maybe it needs 02 20 22. No. Uh, okay, let's just go for like 06 04 98. That's a real date, isn't it? Okay, that boots. Okay, so that boots, so uh, I can take the drive out and try it in the 486. Okay, so we've got the files copied over for Prince of Persia and Windows. DOS is booting. Let's see how this goes. And also, how does this screen appear? Ooh, that's better, isn't it? Now in theory, I should be able to install Windows from hard disk. Wow, look at this. Not sure if I've ever installed Windows 3. I mean, we want custom set up, right? Go. We are British. And the language 
English International? What does English International mean? <laughs> Enter. Is this going to have amazing blazing speed from a 128 meg compact flash card? It's actually pretty damn quick. <laughs> God damn, was that it? Wow. Okay, that was fast. Oh, good, the mouse works. <laughs> okay, read me files. I mean, we, we want all of these things, right? Everything. Yes, good. Install. You want a 45 meg swap file on a 120 meg disk. Never change Windows, except do change, because you are absolutely having a laugh. And let's also go for like the same as the RAM we have, so 12-ish, change, yes, <laughs> okay. Really hope a 486 can manage 32 bit disk access. Oh, we have some more set up. We went down setting up. Okay. And we don't boot Windows automatically. Okay. Yee, flying Windows. Oh my goodness, the speed and the horrible screen persistence wow so that's my Toshiba T2110 almost fully working what is this thing useful for should I keep it in my collection well it works just fine as a word processor but I am not sure I really need one of those technically it could play any game that was worth playing in grayscale but only with PC speaker boops and beeps and that would be more fun on the old compact portable so its utility is almost zero, but it's so cool. Now, what a weird computer, the last of the mono brigade and in excellent condition too. Not everything needs a purpose after all, sometimes it's okay to just enjoy something for its own sake. Is there anything left to do with this machine? Well if I ever start writing a book, maybe I'll put new cells in the battery and have it as my quirky companion, but other than that it's in good shape. I'll probably just take it out every once in a while when I need some Windows 3.1 nostalgia. Best of luck with your own projects, stay safe out there until next time.